A very good morning to all of you my dear students. I hope so. All of you are in good health. So for our GK class today, let us see from the new chapter and the name of this chapter is Fog Dances. It is from page 48 of your textbook. Now students, we all know that India is the home of many folk dances. Folk dances are traditional simple and are performed to express joy. They are performed on various occasions. Now students, let us discuss some of the folk dances of various states in India. Now first, let us discuss the Kachi Kodi dance of Rajasthan. Now the Kachi Kodi dance is one of the most popular folk dances of Rajasthan. This folk dance originated from the Bandit regions of Shekhawati and is generally performed for the entertainment of the bridegroom's party. This dance is performed by men on dummy horses. Men wear elaborate costumes that is red turbans and hotis and kurtas embellished with brilliant mirror work and ride the dummy horses. These dancers move according to the beating of the drums and hold a sword in their hand while a singer narrates the exploits of the Bavaria bandits of Shekhawati region through his song. Next, let us discuss the Brita dance of West Bengal. Now, Brita dance is the traditional folk dance of West Bengal. It is performed by the women in rural areas to ask the deity to bless them with children and to show gratitude for helping them recover from contagious diseases like chickenpox. The folk dance is performed on the temple premises both before and after their wishes are fulfilled. So after their wishes are granted, the women again dance in the temple premises to appease the deity and thank him for his blessings. Now next let us discuss the Gendi dance of Madhya Pradesh. Now Gendi is the folk dance popular in the Windhya and Satpura ranges. It is common among Gon children of Madhya Pradesh. This dance is usually performed during the rainy season. The Gendi season starts on the day of the Bak Bandhi festival in June and concludes after the Pola dance celebrations in August. The dancer stands on the Gendi. The experts can perform it even in water or on marshy surface. Gendi dance is brisk and ends with a dance in pyramid formation. The balancing and clever footwork are the main attractions. Now next let us discuss the Dalkai dance of Odisha. Dalkai is one of the most popular traditional folk dance forms of Sambalpur that is Western Odisha. Dushera is the occasion of its performance. Dalkai is usually performed by unmarried girls. The drummer beats the dhol at the beginning of the performance. Young girls standing in a line sing Dalkai songs. After singing for a while, they start dancing by bending forward in a half sitting position. Next, let us discuss the Giddha dance of Punjab. Now, Giddha is the popular folk dance of Punjab that is performed only by the ladies. This dance is the female counterpart of the Bhangra and has the same tempo of high spirited revelry. Gitta is performed during festive or social occasions, especially during the sowing and reaping of the harvest. 
The roots are deep rooted in Punjab's culture and are believed to be inspired from the ancient ring dance which is marked by graceful movements and high energy. Bright clothes, rhythmic clapping and traditional folk songs blend in to transform the dance into a spontaneous display of joy. At the same time, it also manages to creatively display feminine grace, elegance and flexibility. Now last, let us discuss the good dance of Jammu. Now the good dance which is performed by the local people of Jammu's middle mountain ranges is basically a ritual to honor the Lok Devtas or the gods of the people. That is why this is also a ritual that takes place as a celebration for the successful harvesting of the crops, especially the maize. The good dance is a kind of thanks giving ritual based dance performed mostly during nights to honor the Lok Devtas. So students, those are some of the four dances of various states in India. Now let us come to another chapter and the name of this chapter is World Study and it is from page 21 of your textbook. Now students, let us see about Thailand. Thailand is known as the land of white elephants as here they are considered sacred. These elephants are considered to be a symbol of royal power. Any white elephant found in Thailand is presented to the king. Now next let us see about Australia. Australia is famous for the merino breed of sheep which yields very fine wool. This has earned Australia the title of the land of the golden fleece. A renowned British journalist named George A. H. Sala in his articles spoke of Australia as the land of golden fleece as it was a significant source of wool in the British Empire and was at that time experiencing gold rush across the colony. Now next, let us discuss about Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was an American lawyer and statesman who served as the 16th President of the United States from the year 1861 until his assassination in the year 1865. On April 14, 1865, Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States, was assassinated by the well-known stage actor John Wilkes Booth while attending the play Our American Cousin at Ford's Theater in Washington. Now let us see the civilizations which influenced the Renaissance. Now the ancient world of Rome and Greece as interpreted by the humanists greatly influenced Renaissance art. The scientific revolution was an element of the Enlightenment period. The Renaissance was a period of rebirth in arts, science and European society. Now let us discuss the last point that is Renaissance in Italy. Now Italy is known for its considerable architectural achievements such as the construction of temples and similar structures during ancient Rome. The founding of the Renaissance architectural movement in the late 14th to 16th century. And being the homeland of Paleogenism, a style of construction which inspired movements such as that of neoclassical architecture and influenced the designs which noblemen built their country houses all over the world, notably in the United Kingdom, Australia and the United States of America during the late 17th to early 20th centuries. 
All right now students, we have come to the end of today's class and I hope so that all of you, you get some important information from what we discussed today. Also remember that you'll have to write down in your GK copy the self-textbook questions which I will give you. And after you finish, you can send in my personal number and remember that you'll have to write down your name, your class, your section and your rule number along with the date on which we have this subject clearly. So we will meet again in the next class. Thank you students.